Happy New Year. How can we have a strong Catholic New Year? You're making goals, resolutions, promises. Are you going to be successful? Are you going to be wiser, more prudent, more holy this year than you were the year before? I hope so. Today I'm going to give you some tips. I'm here with my new little buddy, Duke Man. My new best friend is Duke. Oh, yes, Duke. He's so cute. I've never really been a dog person my entire life. And we got these two Cavapoo puppies at Christmas. St. Nicholas brought them to the kids, our eight kids. But I really like them. We got a, a boy and a girl. This is the boy. His name is Duke. And... uh He's just great. He's going to be sitting with me, chilling with me today. We're going to talk about goals. What are good goals? How to make sure that the goals are completed. Joe and I are going to do our dream lines tonight. I'll explain what a dream line is. Joe and I have been doing that for 10 years. And we took all of our kids out for lunch today to talk about goals and how to achieve things and you know, fulfill hopefully righteous wants, desires, and what it means to want things, want experiences to do things, and then want to, to become things. We call that having, doing, being. So I'm going to go through all that today with y'all, and uh, we'll begin with our prayer, and then we'll jump into resolutions, tips. I'm going to give you about 10 suggestions. You can take them or leave them, Um, and then also some tips on how to get those things done. So before we do, Duke and I will do our prayers. We'll do the Our Father. Nomini Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in celi, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, Sicut et nos dimittimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Amen. Nomini Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, and today will be a little different too. As we're going along, I'll be more attentive to the uh, questions over in the live chat. So as I'm going along, if I see something, uh, I'll answer it. Right now, I just saw Al Boley says, Taylor, should we as laymen live a monastic lifestyle? And we should not especially if you're married with kids. Um, That doesn't mean that you shouldn't be, well, I'll get to it today. I'll get to the disciplines. Um, All right, first off, Joy and I were talking with our kids. You know, Joy and I, um, we're pretty serious about goals. Uh, We have eight kids. Um, We're healthy. We're youthful. Uh, Joy and I are both in good shape. Our kids are healthy and youthful and thriving. Um, We're both very active mentally and physically. Um, We've been involved in sports. Our kids are involved in sports, triathlon, wrestling, running, cycling, uh, rugby, so on and so forth. Uh, I've been involved in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for a number of years. I'm a purple belt. And, um, you know, mentally, I've written 10 books. Um, There's an art to just getting things done. And that art is smart. And I'll put that on the screen. Oh, it's already on the screen. Good. Smart goals. You can see it right over here. So smart goals. If you don't choose your goals using smart, it's not going to work out. So the first one is S. Be specific. It has to be something that is not general, like I'm going to get healthy this year. What does that even mean? I'm going to lose weight this year. What does that even mean? You need to have something extremely specific, like I'm going to read the Bible 
this year. That's going to be one of the things I recommend. Right? That's what does that mean? Well, you're going to read the whole Bible, Genesis to Apocalypse. It's there's no fuzziness about it. You can at the end of the year say I did or I did not do it. It's very specific. And that brings us to the next one, M. We're talking about smart goals. M, measurable. Can you measure progress and whether or not you have completed it? So, for example, getting healthy is very difficult to measure. Or I'm going to lose weight. I mean, does that mean you're going to lose 8 ounces or 8 pounds or 80 pounds? So it has to be specific and measurable. And what's good about it being measurable is it's motivating the other day, I was talking about reading the Bible through the year, and I said, you must, do I have a p- picture over here? I folded it up. I said, you must, when you do the Bible in a year, I'll drag it on the screen, it'll be easier. You must click off, scratch off with a pencil. Here's a sample of it. If you finish January 1, Genesis 1, Psalm 1, and Matthew 1, you physically scratch it off or check it off. By measuring your progress, it gives you motivation. And we need motivation. For example, when I'm writing a book, I create a timeline, a scale, and then I check it off. I actually go into my notes and sign off on it like I'm holding myself accountable as a manager. And that makes me feel really good. Like, wow, today was the goal to be, whatever it was, one-third finished with the book. And today I am one third finished. And it puts a smile on your face and a kick in your step. You're doing it. And if you're behind, you say, "Mm, man, I'm not one third. I was supposed to be one third. Okay, well, tomorrow I'm going to have to really focus. And it drives you to go ahead and do what you need to do. So that's M, measurable. A, achievable, attainable. There are certain goals that you will never meet. And you need to be realistic. You need to push yourself. But you also need to realize I'm going to be on the PGA Tour as a golfer by the end of the year for me is completely unattainable. I'm horrible at golf. I've played golf for years. I'm just, I've just never been able to get my score down even in below 90. I'm horrible. So that's not an attainable goal for me. So Be realistic, because if you choose a bunch of goals that you can't do, well, then you're bummed out. R, we're going over smart goals for those of you joining us. R is relevant, reasonable. Is it something that you, I mean, there's certain certain things that are arbitrary. Like, I want to get, you know, so many followers on Instagram. I mean, really, like, is that really something that you should make as a goal? Like it's an arbitrary thing. It's relevant. I mean, what if they cancel Instagram or Instagram shuts down? Or I mean, you never know. There's people who spend so much time getting so many Twitter followers and then they get canceled. But then they stop caring about Twitter or whatever. And then the last one, T, kind of goes back to M, measurable. Time bound. Time bound. A goal is a dream with a due date. So you have to time bound your goals, your dreams. So I'm going to get it done by the end of the year is okay. I have found and others have found if you chop it up into tinier bits, your goals are more achievable. So instead of saying, I'm going to read the Bible in a year, well, you should say that. Then you say, now, how do I chop that up to make it more time bound? Okay, well, I will read my three readings every day before breakfast or during breakfast, right? So now you've taken a yearly goal and you've now made it a daily goal. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's the way you get goals done. Smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound. There you go. That right there will change your life if you can start implementing that. The next thing is dream lines. Joy and I tonight are going to meet and we're going to do our dream lines. And it sounds cheesy, but this is what we do. And we take our desires, our goals, our resolutions, all these things that are always bouncing around your mind. 
and we get out, I know this sounds nerdy, we get out a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, and we have three columns, having, doing, being, having, doing, being. And having is things that we would like to have or that we need. So for you, it could be like, wow, we really were having a new baby and our old, you know, four door car is not sufficient. We need to have a van, a minivan. So you put that on there, right? Or it may be, man, the kitchen sink is no good. We need a new kitchen sink and a new, what are you doing? We, we need a new, you know, whole sink or we need a new refrigerator or the kids need new shoes, whatever it is. You put that down in having. Then the next one is doing. These are things you want to do, like a vacation. Uh, we want to go to the mountains this year. I want to do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, I want to run every day, whatever it is. That's the doing. And then the third column is the most important column. And as I explained to the children today, as you mature as a person, having becomes less important, having stuff. Doing is important, but the most important thing is being. And that is, what do you want to become? What do you want to be this year? Do you want to be an author? Do you want to be a father, a mother, a spouse, a teacher? What are you doing? You know what Duke likes? I'm going to interrupt you. Duke has discovered that I wear a brown scapular. And when he's sitting on my lap, he'll come up and he'll dig if I'm wearing a dress shirt in between, won't you, in between the buttons. And he likes to grab that scapular and then he like, you know, does puppy fight. So is that what you're doing? Yeah, he's trying to find a scapular. So Joy and I will do these Dreamlines and we'll talk about the whole year. Because what's great is when you talk about what you what you need to have, then you start creating smart goals, as you see on the screen. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound. How do we afford a new van? How do we get uniforms for our kids? How do we get to afford our kids to go to that Catholic school? And then, well, how are we going to find time and afford to do that trip to the mountains or whatever? And then being, if you want to be something... That's also going to take, you know, planning. And so when you divide up your life, like Joe and I do, into having, doing, and being, then once you've defined those things, then you set down your goals, your resolutions using, over here, the SMART method. Does that make sense? All right, I'm going to pause now and look at some of the questions. And then I'm going to give you my recommendations for you to have a strong, Catholic year. Okay. But real quick, let me look on here. AB, any tips on being in an unhappy 24 year marriage? I'm just very sorry. Pray. Christ is the good shepherd. And um, you need graces. I would say, remember when Jesus turned the water into wine at the wedding of Cana? They come to the Blessed Mother and they say, We have no wine. We got water. So you need to go to Mary and say, my marriage is just water. It's no wine. It's no joy. Turn our water into wine. And we know that they'll do that. Pray. Pray. i right, look at a couple other ones. Here. Stephanie Harris. It's like a vision board. Yes. I guess. I don't know exactly what a vision board is. But our dream line is kind of that. We sort of put everything up on having, doing, and being as Catholic people, as Christian parents. And we sort of, as a couple, you know, yeah, it's a vision board. We get a vision for what each of us separately and together are trying to do. And then from there, we can start arranging our goals, our resolutions, our plans for the year. And that has to do with donations and money and time and plans and all kinds of things. Uh, let's see. Just lots of prayer requests. That's great. 
did the Marshall Plan for reading the Bible, got four days behind in August due to the Rona. Catching up was a bit of a chore. Great plan. Don't fall back more than two days. Good. Good job, Andy. Oh, what's the matter? You're okay. Okay. I'm going to move on here. What are some suggestions for you? Now, I can't, dis I don't know, you know, what your dream line or your vision board is for having, doing, being. But I can say here are some general things I think when I talk to Catholics, when they ask for advice, when they're making their plans, here are some very generic norms that I would suggest. First off, you need a traditional calendar, a traditional Catholic calendar. We're talking about making the best of time. You got 365 days. You need to orient your life based on Fridays, Ember days, Lent, Advent, feast days. How are you going to do that unless you have a traditional Catholic calendar constantly staring back at you? You need to get one. Which ones do I recommend? The fraternity makes one. The Angelus Press makes one, which I last year very much enjoyed. It's very beautiful. It's very well made. If you want a 1962 traditional Catholic calendar, the Angelus Press one is the best one, in my opinion. They don't pay me to say that. They didn't even give me a free one this year. So the Angelus Press one is good. The one I'm using that I used last year, I used Angelus, and I used the name of it is. Oh, I can't see it. I don't want to drop Duke. I'll share it later. But it's a 1950s rubric, so it's a pre-55 calendar. It's done by a group in Montana, I believe. I would get up and get it, but I have this dog in my lap. I don't want to drop him. Uh, but a traditional Catholic calendar, you can go online, search around. Um, I'll make some more suggestions um, but I think if, you, if you're going to a 1962 Mass, the Angelus Press one, which is pu the publishing arm of the SSPX, has a very beautiful, well-done one that has all the things about Ember Days and what you can and can't eat, etc. What's the matter? Scripture in a year. You should read the Bible in one year. And right below me in YouTube right now is the link to my 365-day plan that I've been doing since I think 2015 or 2016. It is a plan that includes the deuterocanonical books, which most year in a Bible plan do not include. This one does include the full Catholic Bible. And instead of having two longer readings, I broke it up into three readings. The first reading is Old Testament, the third reading is New Testament, and the second reading is from the Psalms and Wisdom Literature. So you can get prudent and wise every single day. The link in Dropbox for you to download this PDF, it's two pages, you can print it two pages or front and back, fold it and put it in your Bible, is right below. So click on it. Hundreds of people have read the Bible using this plan that I suggest, that I arranged and collected. And I'm reading the Bible again this year. So today's day three, we're doing Genesis 3, Psalm 3, and Matthew 3. And when you do it, you take a pencil, and if you can see mine right now, you can see I've scratched them off. All right. Read the Summa in a year. I would say read the Bible first, but if you've already read the Bible in a year, read the Summa of Thomas Aquinas in a year. If you're at New St. Thomas Institute, which is where I teach online courses, I have a whole section in a video where I do an interview with a man, a layman, who read the entire Summa, and we talk about how he did it and how it's possible and how you go about it. So if you're interested in that and you're a member over at New St. Thomas Institute, you can go and watch that. If you're not, go ahead and join. Start the new year taking online Catholic courses, NewStThomas.com, NewStThomas.com. You can also, alternatively, read the entire Catechism of Trent in a year. I'm working on a plan, kind of like the Bible plan, for the Catechism of the Council of Trent. Um, you don't need me to actually give you the readings. You could actually just say, well, I'm going to read, probably if you read one and a half or two pages a day, you'd read the whole thing in a year. All right? That's a suitable goal and plan. That's bite size. 
Another one is to be serious this year about Lent. I'd encourage you to go back and maybe watch some of my older videos on what Lent was like before Vatican II, what Lent was like in the time of Thomas Aquinas and the Crusades, and what Lent was like in the early church. Lent was hard. In the old days, during Lent, you lost weight because there was a limit on when you could eat, the amount of kind of the amount of food you could eat, and the quality of food you could eat. Also, the cycle of penance, prayers, all that that goes into Lent. This is a year where, and again, you shouldn't get crazy and you know sleep on a bed of nails and um, those kind of extra penances always have to be clear to the priest. But penances, unless you have an eating disorder or you're diabetic or have insulin problems, fasting, the aesthetical, uh, ascetical, sorry, the ascetical theologians say, fasting is always the preferred penance for the lay people. Extra stuff like self-flagellation and things like that, that needs, that needs spiritual director approval. What's up, bud? I would challenge you, this year I'm going to do a new challenge, you'll hear more about it as we get to Lent. I'm challenging people who don't normally attend the Latin Mass to attend the Latin Mass for the six Sundays in Lent. There's a lot of couples where one wants to go and one doesn't want to say, hey honey, can we just go to the Latin Mass just during Lent, just the six Sundays of Lent, and just see how it goes. It's kind of like how I do the Advent Challenge, but this is, which is the four Sundays of Advent to go to the Latin Mass. This is go to the Latin Mass for six Sundays in Lent. And once you've been three or four or five times, you're going to love it. It's going to be great. So make this a year, if you don't already, to go to the traditional Latin Mass. Is someone here? Yes. Hey. Um, oh, oh, you brought in Daisy? Daisy. There's the sister. And here's the brother. Hey. Oh, they love each other, don't they? They love each other. Hi, Daisy. Hi. All right, I'm doing a video. You want to say hi to everybody? Hi. <laughs> okay. My name is Daisy. Did you, is this the best Christmas ever? Yes. Why? Because. Because why? We got two puppies. We got two puppies. From Santa. And I got my two front teeth out. And your two front teeth fell out, yeah. What a year. Yay. All right. Hey, actually, would you, we, um, could you carry both dogs right now? Yes. You sure? Yeah. All right, everybody say bye, Duke. Bye, Duke. <laughs> Godspeed. All right. You got them? Yeah. Okay. Be careful. Are you sure? Yeah, I got them. All right. All right, here, I'm going to get you the, the calendar now. The calendar that I like, that I use, is called Roman Catholic Calendar. And it's published by Immaculate Heart of Mary in Black Eagle, Montana. I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know this, um, but I'm guessing maybe they're set of a contest. I don't know. I just like it because it has everything pre-55. Everything. So I'd recommend this one and the Angelus Press one. And it has nice art. I like that. Okay, so Latin Mass. Latin Mass. Every day. Rosary every day. You hear me say it all the time. Pray the rosary every day or you're not on the team. Pray the rosary. Make this the year. I know some of you watch the show and you don't pray the rosary every day. You got to pray the rosary every day. Rattle the beads. Pray the rosary. It's the weapon. It is the key to a happy and holy family of happy little children, happy marriages, the rhythm of the rosary in the evening. Think about your own life and how blessed it would be if every evening of your entire life, from infant 
to when you left home at 18, your father and your mother were praying the rosary over you and over the family. Of hundreds of evenings as a child where you would fall asleep praying the rosary. That's what we need. That's what we need to build. Another one is no meat on Friday. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm recovering from an illness. I don't know if it's the Omicron or just a flu. I have no idea. But it's kind of a upper chest uh, cold. No meat on Friday. I know there's a lot of people out there, Catholics, living the faith, but like, well, you know, before after Vatican II, we don't have to eat, or we can't eat meat on Friday. It's no big deal. You know, God doesn't really care. Look, we have to do penance every Friday. Why? Because of Good Friday. Friday, every, every single Friday, unless a holy day of precept falls upon it, we have to do penance on Friday. And going back to the apostles, that's right, the 12 apostles, not eating meat on Friday is what was established. So don't eat meat on Friday. What do you do instead? Super simple. You just have to get your family or your friends or your roommates into the cycle. And that is, you have fish sticks, quesadillas, cheese nachos, what else? Macaroni and cheese, cheese pizza, a salad with some balsamic vinaigrette on it, scrambled eggs, an omelet. It's not hard to do. You can even get some salmon, tuna casserole. The, there's so many options. If you're on the go, you can always get a fish sandwich or fish and chips. All right, I'm going to pause here and see if there's any other questions. Uh, Sigma Male says, Dr. Marshall, please do a show on how young men should find attractive trad women companions in today's world. Uh, young men shouldn't, I don't, they shouldn't have trad women companions. They should have trad women wives. Uh, you're not called to like hang out and have a uh, friend zone trad women companions. I don't like that. Maybe I'm just misreading you. Um, you need to, if you want it, if you're called to marriage, you need to get married. You need to get married. And the way you do that is you improve yourself and become as irresistible as possible. And then you walk up to the most attractive or, and the attractive, I don't just mean by looks, but her inner soul. And uh, you pursue her and court her in a godly and pure fashion. And then you lead her to the altar. All right, starting a new job, pray for her, good. Dr. Taylor, are restrictions likely to see the eventual end of the FSSP and Institute of Christ the King? What about pursuing a vocation to these orders with thanks, Joseph? Uh, I don't think it'll be the end. I think both orders, both institutes or fraternities are going to probably have an internal um, have internal friction. I don't know if it will divide them, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see. I think the pressure will be pushed down from on top, from Francis and gang. And then how to respond to that pressure will manifest itself with different personalities and different approaches. Um, but I think what's going to happen over the next five years is they're going to request that the Fraternity of St. Peter, Institute of Christ the King, and any other former Ecclesia Day group, they're going to say you, you have to have communion on the hand. Um, you have to con-celebrate. Well, they're already saying it's con-celebrate at Chrismas. You have to communion on the hand. For anyone who puts their hands up, you can't uh, reject them. You need ultra girls. Um, you're going to have to go to the Novus Ordo lectionary. Uh, it's just going to be a death by a thousand cuts. And this is, you know, I think Archbishop Lefebvre had foresight, realizing that, you know, micro, micro concessions on tradition are ultimately lead to mega concessions. So we'll see. I've already said before what I think they should do. I think they should all unite. Take a deep breath, puff out their chests, and say, we're not doing any of this Traditionus Custodia stuff at all. 
and then just say nothing and just keep on going. And then what are they going to do? Censure, suspend, excommunicate all of them at the same time? No. No. Some pray for their future spouses before they meet them. Of course, I prayed for Joy years before I ever met her. I was taught to do that as a Protestant, and I think it's a good thing. You should all, and I pray for all my children's spouses, and my children hear me out loud pray for their future spouses. See, there's any more questions here? Do ca do Catholics agree with the Calvinist view on predestination? No, absolutely not. Let's see here. Looking, for, make sure you use a question mark. That way, I can see if it's a question. Sushi is a sacrifice. Yes, it is. Not eating. Look, a lot of people don't understand this. Not eating meat. Okay, so they're like, well, a hot dog is a dollar and a lobster is $20. So clearly eating the hot dog is more penitential. No, okay? You have to go. I've done shows on this. I've done podcasts on this. You go back to Thomas Aquinas and you read the philosophy and the theology of it. It has to do with like kind. So land animals are more like humans because we live on the land. And since there's an affinity in our natures, there is the idea is there's more nutrition, there's more strength, there's more power, and according to Thomas Aquinas, there's more virility. And yes, he's talking about sexual virility. In eating, for example, beef, warm-blooded animals. Not so with eating vegetables, which are further from us, and even seafood, which is closer to us, but further away than land animals. So the idea here is not, well, a hot dog costs $1 and lobster costs $20. Ergo, hot dog is more penitential. It's not like that. It has to do with the animal kingdom and proximity to human nature. And we're not talking about evolution here either. We're talking about analogy and likeness. So, yes, if it's Friday and your option is a 50 cent hot dog or a $40 or $50 lobster, you eat the lobster, right? That, the pen, that's the penitential element. And it doesn't matter if you're like, well, I think salad tastes better than a ribeye. So I'm going to eat the ribeye on Friday. No, no, no. Okay. We're talking about the principle of the nature of the meat. Okay. That is what's going on when we talk about fish Fridays. It's not about money. Uh, it's not about taste buds or anything like that. So we got to, you know, we're third millennium humans and we like to think of everything in terms of commercialism and money. Like whatever would cost the most would therefore be the best and should be avoided. No, that's, it's all messed up. So yes, so you can eat sushi on a Friday. You could have a, I don't know what sushi costs. Sushi's like what, eight or nine bucks? Or a hot dog is $1. Well, on a Friday, you should eat the sushi. Rice and raw fish, as opposed to eating a hopefully all beef hot dog. Yes. Sushi is a major treat for me. I understand, but that still doesn't mean that it's non-penitential. A salad can be a treat for me too. I can love a great salad. Caesar salad, mm, with the I like the uh, when it tastes kind of fishy. You know, it's got the sardine in the sauce. I like that. That's a treat for me too. So again, fish Fridays, fr penitential Fridays are not about what you yourself actually prefer. That's not the principle. All right, one more. You can be super gangster Catholic and just fast on Friday. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're not required to, but it's great. Especially maybe skipping breakfast on a Friday and not eating meat. Awesome. I think it should be some sort of penance on Friday, though. What if we love to see, eat seafood and it's no penance? Okay, Christian Dominguez, that's not, the, that's not it. You're missing it. It's not about your personal preference. Otherwise... For 2,000 years, the Catholic Church would have said, well, just don't eat something you prefer 
on Fridays. That's not it. That's not it. It's not about me and my personal um, likes. Otherwise, your penance becomes personally curated to you and there is no consistency, there is no Catholic culture. Again, it goes back to what St. Thomas Aquinas explains. There is a proximity, especially if you look at, well, I mean, just how we're even made, of land animals and birds to us and our natures, and there is a remoteness when it comes to seafood and plants. And so the church has divided a line there of course, it goes back to Noah's Ark. In Noah's Ark, they didn't eat any of the animals in the Ark, but they ate the fish that were outside the Ark. That's, Noah's Ark has always been a, a uh, type of the church. So again, it's very American. It's very modern to think, well, I like this and you like that, so I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. That's not the Catholic Church's discipline of penance. We got it. We got to. We got to understand this. And I actually think, I actually think that that way of thinking, like, well, I like salad, or, man, I really like sushi, so it wouldn't be even be a penance for me, or I don't like burgers. So I, that whole idea of I'm just, this is what I like and what you like, that whole relativistic idea is what led to the church saying, well, the whole no meat on Friday thing, you don't have to do it. All right, this is how discipline gets eroded. See one more. How do we bring our adult children back to practicing their faith? The best thing is prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. It's not just about handing them a book to read, it's prayer and fasting. Fried eggs and toast are served on many Fridays throughout the entire year in my house. Perfect. Perfect. Um, also, I'm going to finish off. There's just two more things, two more suggestions. Um, I said no meat on Fridays. Start celebrating the four Ember Days. I've made video podcasts on the Ember Days. Learn more about that. Get your Catholic calendar. Learn about the Ember Days. Uh, physical fitness. Eating less. Eating healthy. Cooking your own meals. Moving around more. Lifting weights. Walking. Walking is great. I try to walk three miles a day as part of fitness. Walking just sort of, it helps your posture, helps your joints, your bo- your bones, it gets your blood flowing, flushes your brain, gets some oxygen through all your organs and your muscles. It's just good. We need to walk more. Sit less, walk more. And then the last one is money. You need to use your money for God. And... Joy and I, our family, have the triple play on money. Triple play. Three three places we put money. In the first one is seminaries, convents, and monasteries. Seminaries, convents, and monasteries. And I'm going to perhaps offend some people, but one of our standards is it must be a traditional order or seminary in other words the traditional sacraments so that's a standard that we've set and you have to set your standards because you're going to get hit up for money all the time in the catholic church you your spouse your family has to set up what are our standards just like when you give when the government gives grants to people they have certain standards that these groups have to meet in order to get the grant you need to set up what are my standards otherwise you're just going to be giving money to who knows what All right, so set your grant standards. I want to see accountability and finances. I want to see a traditional formation of prayer, traditional sacraments, uh, you know, for convents, traditional habit, veil, traditional cycle of life, maybe if it's part of their charism cloistered, et cetera. Like, I'll give, but I want to make sure that these are the standards for the grants, right, for the giving. I know that's probably going to upset some people. Like, well, you should just give money. No, I, there's only so much money that we have. So when we give it, we have to make sure that it's conforming to our our convictions, our beliefs. The other one is pro-life. We always give to pro-life. 
The most needy are those in the, in the womb who are in danger of being killed. So pro-life is another section. And then the other part of the triple play is, what am I forgetting here? Oh, the needy, the homeless, the widow, and the orphan. All right. So it is of divine law that we assist orphans and widows and the homeless. If your budget for 2022 doesn't include giving to the hungry, the thirsty, the needy, the homeless, the orphan, the widow, you are morally obliged in January now to figure out how you're going to do that uh, during the year. Um, one of the things we do at New St. Thomas Institute, which is where I teach online courses, is a portion of all the tuition goes to assist two sources, orphans in China, and then also feeding the homeless. So a portion of all the tuition does that. That way, not only in New St. Thomas Institute are we studying philosophy and studying theology, but we're also living it by supporting those who are in need. You know, it's not all about the mind. It's also about the heart and about the hands. And that's why I end um, with this one. You have to use your goods, your time, your money to help, as I see it, the future of the church. So I support traditional seminaries, traditional monasteries, traditional convents, all right? That's sort of equipping the generals and the leaders into the future. And then we got to help those most in need, the homeless, the orphans, the widows, and then those who we can't see in the womb, the babies, we got to help them through, you know, laws and courts and governors and voting and also local centers that help take care of mothers and newborn babies, single moms, diapers, foods, all that. Okay, so those are suggestions. I gave you the SMART goals. I'll put them back, I'll back there on the screen. If I can find them, there they are. The SMART goals. Below, you'll find the one year, how to read the Bible in one year. Get yourself a Dewey or Ames Bible. Print that out. Put it inside the Bible. We're on day three, so it's not too late. You can get caught up easy. You can get caught up easy on day three. If it was day 30, oof. It's going to be tough, but we're on day three. You can do it. All right, I'll answer a couple more questions, then we'll pray, and we'll sign off. Let's see. Calvinists. I don't talk about Calvinists. Make sure you use a question mark so I see it. Uh, if you don't have money to donate, then donate your time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so if you, she says, uh, Stephanie, props to you, Stephanie. She's a Texan, too. Good job, Stephanie. She volunteers at a soup kitchen. If you don't have extra money to give to a soup kitchen or to help nuns at an orphanage or whatever, you can physically go there and assist and help. And in some ways, you know, when I've done mission trips or helped uh, at soup kitchens, in some ways that ministers to you more because you're actually seeing the faces that you're assisting. And that ministers back to you. Christian Dominguez. Oh, it's Christian again. Hey, Christian. I've always looked up to you, doctor. I hope to one day be half the man as you are. As a 19-year-old, I always binge watch everything you have to offer. God bless. Oh, don't look up to me. Look to the saints. I'm just a dad on a webcam. Dean Barker, are you going to March for Life? Yes, my teenage daughter every day is like, Dad, let's go to March for Life. Dad, let's go to March for Life. I haven't booked it yet, but I think I'm going to go. I'm so glad I have teenage girls that want to go to March for Life. How can you ID the trad seminaries? It's not hard. <laughs> you can do it in about three minutes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Would you be open to accepting that in Vatican II there may be definitive teaching that is doctrine and not dogma? Absolutely. Yes, I've never denied that. Uh, for example... Lumen Gentium states that Mary's mediatrix. That's doctrine, and I accept it, absolutely. I donate to nursing home for sisters who educated me. I think that's a, a wonderful way to give back. We really have to support the good nuns. They, they are so integral to our church. 
Uh, George Ortiz, don't shave that beard. Let it grow. I don't know. It's getting long. Mrs. Marshall sort of making comments like, eh, it's getting kind of long. It's getting kind of wiry, too. Oh, we'll see. One day it may be gone, though. I'm kind of getting the feeling. I hope he will talk more about TLM and Nova Sordo. Oh, my goodness. I feel like I talk about that too much. May go go full vegan in 2022. Meat is getting way too expensive to buy anyways. I'd be careful about that. Meat is really important, especially if you're young and if you're old. Um, for example, they're finding um, the fats and the collagen that you get from meat when you're older can actually help with Alzheimer's and things like that. Um, and a, a diet without it can accelerate Alzheimer's. Um, also, young children need to have proteins, meats, um, all that. So I would just be very careful, especially on your age, on making a... Veganism is a very radical lifestyle. Be very careful about that. Dean Barker, do you think the SSPX should go back to the pre-55 calendar? Or would that be unwise, considering the weird canonical status? Absolutely, they should. Uh, the 1962 Holy Week in Triduum and calendar is Bunini. That means every time you do the 62 Good Friday and the 62 Holy Saturday, you, you've invited Bunini. You're doing an Anabal Bunini. It's not as bad as what happened in 6970. Obviously, it's much better, but it has all the seeds of the Novus Ordo in the 1962 Holy Week. So, I think it is a major mistake. I understand that Archbishop Lefebvre used the 62, that there were reasons pastorally to use the 62, but now that we're living in 2022 and we're looking back over time, we can see the hand of Bugnini in the 62 uh, liturgies and rubrics, and I think it's a big mistake. It shows an inconsistency on the traditional part to settle for the 62. We need pre-55. Yes. Uh, correct. Eggs do not count as meat for us in the Catholic Church. That's correct. So I will often have eggs on a Friday. What is your view on predestination, doctor? Please answer my question. It would mean the world, Silent Night. Um, Silent Night, I hold to the view of St. Thomas Aquinas. Um, I think I've done a video on it on YouTube. I know in the new St. Thomas Institute, I've done a video on predestination. It's I think Silent Night, you would... Love it. You should, if anything, sign up for New St. Thomas Institute just to watch that treatment on predestination uh, and the various views in the Catholic Church as they contrast to views in the Protestant tradition. Uh, that's at NewStThomas.com, and it's in the Certificate on Theology. And it's under the, I believe it's under the St. Augustine section. So check for it there. You can always sign up for New St. Thomas Institute. You could watch that video and then cancel. I wouldn't like that, but you're free to do that if it's really important to you. I can't believe I just said that in front of hundreds of people. All right, one more. My liberal grandfather said he'd become Anglican if the church ever went full traditional Latin mass again. His faith is truly weak. Pray for him, okay? We will pray for him. Kyle Marks, and this will be the last question. Opinions on Blessed Dunn's SCOTUS. Um, when I was writing my PhD, I read a lot of Blessed John Dunn SCOTUS. Um, of course, SCOTUS is right on the Immaculate Conception. Uh, he's right, I think, when it comes to the incarnation as happening, whether or not there were sin. Uh, there's certain positives in SCOTUS, but I'm not a SCOTUS, I'm a Thomist. And I think ultimately Dunn SCOTUS's view of being, uh, instead of Thomas Aquinas' understanding of analogy of being, the way SCOTUS understand it is just not philosophically satisfying. So um, I have respect for Dun SCOTUS. I think Dun SCOTUS is in heaven, um, but I think he's he's off on some philosophical points that would probably be boring to to cover. Okay, well, happy New Year! I hope all that was helpful. I'm really pushing praying the rosary every day, and reading the Bible every day. So go below this video and download how to read the Bible in one year worksheet. It is free. It is easy. It is doable. 
hundreds of people have used the sheet that you're about to download to read the entire Bible. The Bible is the love letter of God to you. It is the most important book ever written. You are not truly educated unless you have read the Bible. Even if you're an atheist or another religion, the Bible is the most important book in civilization. So much is based on it. You cannot truly, in any category of studies, you cannot say that you're truly educated if you've never read the Bible. Read the Bible. Here is the easy, easy, easy sheet on how to do it. All right? So that's the thing. Pray the rosary every day. Read the Bible every day. Uh, Guit Levin, thanks for the super chat. Very cool. All right. Y'all have a happy and holy new year, and we'll end with a Hail Mary. In nomine Patris, et Fidei, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in molieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or per nobis peccatoribus, nunc et etor mortis nostre. Amen. Sancta Maria, or per nobis, nomine Patris, et Fidei, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, friends, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please go ahead and like it with a thumbs up. Please share this video on Facebook and subscribe if you are new and make sure that you hit that bell so you'll be notified of every time I do a show here on YouTube. Also, you can listen during this year to the Taylor Marshall podcast on Spotify, on your phones. You can listen to it on iTunes. You can listen to it on Audible. You can listen to it on Amazon Music. Anywhere there are podcasts, the Taylor Marshall podcast is syndicated there. Just search my name, Taylor Marshall, and you can subscribe in those places as well and listen every day. Uh, let's see. Oh, I forgot to mention, sometimes in our dream lines, we have to move. And if you want to move, go to realestateforlife.org, realestateforlife.org. They will help you find a Catholic pro-life real estate agent who can help you sell your house and move to an area, perhaps that has a Latin mass, a traditional Catholic school, a place where you can thrive spiritually. If you want to relocate, go to realestateforlife.org and we click that you heard about it from Dr. Taylor Marshall's show or podcast. Thank you much. And then thanks to everybody who supports this channel on Patreon. If you want me to send you some signed books and some cool merch, and also to support my writing and my podcasting, go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. And I will be giving away some beautiful seraphim rosaries. So look for those to be in the drawing and to win these things. Go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless. Godspeed. I'm going to go find my dogs and my kids, and hang out and get ready for dinner. All right. Happy New Year.